Personally, when I'm looking for home inspiration, I like to see what the old world Europeans did. Unable to hop on a plane right now, not to worry, I went to Stanton, Virginia's Frontier Culture Museum to behold both a German and an Irish farm from the 1700s, which is so old that it actually looks quite hip right now. All right, this is the German farm. Now this is an interesting little glance, the ultimate BTS. Hashtag BTS. This is what goes underneath the layer of white plaster that makes that famous half timber look. So underneath, you've got woven sheets of wood. So these are basically flat sticks and they're woven together and then they pack them with dirt. Nature's insulation. Would I do it in my current house? No, I feel that we've evolved. But for Germans in the 1700s, this was cutting edge. The Germans have such a distinctive style as I beheld last Christmas at their famous Christmas markets, which were such a pleasure. I must get back. I also noted the Germans' no-nonsense work ethic. They work and they play quite seriously. The Germans have always been such a stylish group and forward-thinking. Very innovative. Look at this kitchen and their ambitious gardens. Just a joy. The Germans also knew how to kick up their heels and enjoy good old-fashioned recreation. Look at their outdoor bowling. Now let's hop the pond to Ireland. We're here at the Irish farm. Now this is actually my dream house. I love the white finish over the brick at this farm. And this is what I would hope to replicate, and in this exact color. Now, white is not the same as off-white, cream, ecru, bone, parchment. I like how fresh this white is, but it's a lived-in white. So, I'm going to use my NYX sensor for this. But first, take a look at this thatched roof. Couldn't you just die? This is the stuff of dreams and period films. You know what else makes me want to die? Of happiness is this NYX sensor. I got this and it gives you a perfect reading of what a color is, whether it's on a wall or it's a three-dimensional object. Then the app will suggest very similar colors from a host of different paint lines. So side story, I recently went to see the movie Jaws at my local movie theater. Look at that homemade poster. Doesn't that warm your heart? And I noticed this amazing trim during the town meeting scene. And if I had been there, I would have stuck my nicks to that trim so fast because that is stunning. All of this international design inspiration is making me hungry. But this time, let's go a little farther south to Guatemala for our meal plan. When I last visited Guatemala, I was surprised to see that they don't actually use flour tortillas with their black beans. It's all corn tortillas there. And of course, their beans never came out of a can. No matter what the type of cuisine, it all comes down to using the very best, freshest ingredients possible. And so we march into our Guatemalan black beans with total confidence. We begin with three cups worth of uncooked black beans covered in water in a bowl. Now, we will ultimately be covering this with a kitchen towel and letting it sit overnight so that these beans totally absorb this water, making them soft and much faster to cook. The next day, look, the beans have absorbed the water and they are ready. I fire up my stove and once the water is boiling, I add in the soaked black beans. The beans are going to boil for about 50 minutes, so this is an ideal time to get out the cutting board and start chopping up those delicious vegetables that are going to make all the difference. So I'm beginning with chopping one large yellow onion. Now the joy of this recipe is that you don't have to be too precious about your chopping because it's all going in a blender anyway. So once I chop this onion, I'm setting it aside because I have bigger fish to fry with this cutting board. We're moving on to garlic. The easiest way to shell garlic is to take the broad side of a chef's knife and bang it against the garlic, crushing it, and this just loosens all of that tight um, film that you're trying to peel off and then I snip that terse little edge off and this garlic is going to be putty in my hands. Look how easily it slips out. This is so much more preferable 
to wrestling with garlic skin. Next, the garlic gets chopped, not too preciously as it's all ending up in a blender. Next, I'm going to finely chop some onion for pico de gallo, which is a natural and fulfilling accompaniment to my black beans. Pico de gallo is basically a tomato-based salsa with onion, fresh cilantro, and tomatoes. If you're high-tech, feel free to insert your food processor during this part. I just find it so cumbersome to haul my food processor out of the cupboard, use it, and then clean it, that I just end up chopping things by hand, like this fresh cilantro, which I'm now putting into the bowl with the finely chopped onion. Next, I'm coring and chopping my tomatoes. I like ripe, very high quality tomatoes, preferably locally grown if you can get them, that have the texture of melon. Next, I stir those ingredients together and the pico is done. Then I'm adding a few tablespoons of high quality olive oil to a pan. Once it gets nice and hot, I'm adding my chopped onions. I'm going to shuffle them about. I'm using my bamboo spatula, which won't melt and it won't scrape my pan. I add the garlic when I'm about two minutes away from the onions being nice and golden. The aroma in my kitchen at this point, as you can imagine, is rich. To make sure I get every bit of flavor off the bottom of that pan, I'm deglazing with a white wine, which pulls all of that flavor and all of the nice fat content off of the pan so that I can put it into the dish. For the technically minded who want a firm time on when this will be done, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that when you take the beans out and you blow on them, the skins will peel away like so. These beans cooked for about 50 minutes and just by stirring them around, I can tell that they're done. Also, look at the skins, how they're peeling away. This is the time to put the sauteed onions and garlic into the pot with the beans, shuffle them around. And thankfully, these beans cooked with very little excess liquid. So I'm adding in my freshly cracked pepper and my caldo de pollo. I probably use a few tablespoons, but what's more important to focus on is doing it to your taste. Next, I'm pouring in maybe two cups of chicken stock so that when I pour these into the blender, they'll blend. Oh, and then a hit of fresh cilantro. They go into the blender and they get whirled around. Now, if your beans are not mixing, if they're too claggy, just add some more chicken stock. And you'll want to just blend the daylights out of these beans until you can no longer see little particles rolling around through the blender. Look at that beautiful, thick texture. Oh, you've never had black beans like this before. This recipe is also very budget friendly as we're just on the cusp of a major recession here. This would be a good recipe to put in your note cards. It's also worth knowing that this recipe keeps incredibly well in Tupperware and reheats beautifully in a microwave. What is not to love about this recipe? I have found that Americans really like flour tortillas, so if you're going that route, you really must have fresh, refrigerated tortillas that are raw that you can just buy at Walmart from Tortilla Land in the refrigerated section. These tortillas completely elevate anything you pair them with. My Mexican friend taught me the proper way to cook these, so let's fire up the stove. No oil, no pans, just an open flame. How rustic. Just toss it on there and watch. You can see that it begins to form some bubbles and the edges start to curl. At which point I turn the heat down to low so that I can grab it, flip it over and toss it onto its other side. I crank the flame to high again. Oh, look at that just beautiful, crisp bubbling. The benefits to cooking your tortilla this way are never ending. Aside from not having to wash any pans, this takes mm, about 20 seconds. You're going to change one of your guests' lives with this, or maybe just your own. Ooh, hot. Oh, oh my goodness. Do, 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 do. Tortilla greatness. Oh my word. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. A fresh tortilla 
makes all the difference. Well, and also homemade black beans. Hey, that makes a difference too.